does freedom of speech give the right to offend? Uh, Douglas Murray from The Spectator, if, I mean, if you'd been a newspaper editor, would you have done this? Would you do this? Because surely it would be reckless and you would be putting, the, as Stephen Pollard said this week, you would be putting the lives of your staff at huge risk. Well, first of all, we have to remember what's going on here. This is an attempt, a very clear, a very bloody attempt, to impose Islamic blasphemy law in France and across Europe. And it has to be stopped. That's why these men did it. That's why the journalists of Charlie Hebdo are dead. An attempt to impose Islamic blasphemy law in Paris. The problem is that unless uh, you have an I am Spartacus, as you say, tactic on it, um, it's not worth any one individual or any one, well, let's put it this way, no one publication uh, doing it. Because, you know, after the Danish cartoons affair, Charlie Hebdo was the only paper in the world, really that continue to say it is our right as secular French citizens to draw, lampoon, laugh at, write about whatever we want. We're free people in a free society. They were the only ones who held on to that. And uh, obviously on Wednesday morning we know what happened as a result. So any one publication would, I think, undoubtedly put its staff at uh, considerable risk. That's why, that's why I've suggested this week, um, repeated what Ayan Hersi Ali said after the Danish cartoons affair. We have to spread the risk around. The free press in the free world has to spread the risk around. Our freedoms hang on this. It cannot be left to a single individual or a single publication, a single satirical magazine, to hold the line for all of our freedoms. Raza Nadim, I come to you because you are scowling. Yeah, because I disagree with everything he said so far. Because everything, you know, yeah, most of what he said. Because I stopped listening after a while because it just didn't make sense. When he talks about um, we should, um, you know, the news, um, Charlie Hebdo published whatever they wanted. That's rubbish. They were overtly racist towards Muslims. They were always lampooning Arabs and being overtly racist in most of the publications and the it smacks of hypocrisy because they were prepared in the name of freedom of speech to sack um, a journalist who wrote a column that they considered to be anti-Semitic. So how come there's a line there but when it comes to Muslims, I, it doesn't matter, take it on the chin. Why I, are we treated differently from just, others? Could I just answer that? He was charged it, with a hate it, crime it, as well. Sorry, it's really rich. There are 12 people dead. Oh, for please, no, 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 don't, don't try to use their deaths. No. Just don't, please. Just don't not, try, because I just give you an example me, where I, they did. No, no, let me finish my point. Like, they, the clear you example point, do where they mind. don't care for freedom of okay, speech. Okay, on that example, I'll start with a minute more. Douglas will address that example. If he doesn't, we'll There's make a it. Dozen, and then I'll come back to you and ask you another question. A dozen people were killed, and they're now being smeared as racists, like this gentleman here. And I think that's intolerable. No, I did not. He clearly knows nothing about Charlie Hebdo, I just gave nothing you an example. about France, nothing about French traditions of free speech. Charlie Hebdo is a left-wing, anti-racist publication. It has lampooned and does lampoon everybody. In recent years, it has taken particular delight in lampooning. The most, the, most of the attacks on Charlie Hebdo, the, the non-physical attacks, have been from the Catholic Church, repeated attempts to criminalize Charlie Hebdo for what it says about the Pope. Marine Le Pen, the far right wing leader, is one of the main targets of their satire. You don't understand anything. I just okay. gave you an example. Let me ask you, now. Let me ask you a question. Example. Let me ask you a question, and then uh, thereafter we're going, to, we're going to spread uh, the love, okay? <laughs> uh, as it were. Um, Rosa, I mean, Douglas touches on this. France has a long, some would say fantastic, uh, certainly very proud tradition of vulgar and rude and anti-religious uh, cartoons. Isn't it a, a cultural imposition for a minority to seek to change that? Muslims Answer are being, that question. In France, in 2006, a rapper was prosecuted for saying, I want to urinate on Napoleon. So where is this, um, you know, oh, in believing in a oh, person, explain. you know, we can offend whoever we want. It's rubbish. Muslims are being asked to believe in freedom of speech more than others are because in France they're prepared to prosecute no. an individual on that basis. They've, ba they've banned comedians that they consider to be anti-Semitic. Now mm. I'm saying it's right. If someone's being anti-Semitic, mm. stop them. But why, when we're saying someone is being Islamophobic and anti-Muslim, we're saying we're taking the chin. Is there, why are we treated differently? Is there, if it's unacceptable, as many people feel it is. Many people find it deeply offensive to see cartoons of the, of the Muslim prophet Muhammad. Is there any way in which it is acceptable to poke fun at Islam? 
If you want to poke fun, no one really cares. But the thing is, this isn't about poking We're fun. We're not talking about They're cartoons. Is there well, no, hang on, no, this wasn't about poking fun. This case is being painted as a freedom of speech issue, and it's clearly linked to the war on terror. Oh, if you look at the, the, cartoon, the, the killers, what they say, we're part of Al-Qaeda. It wasn't a cartoon that riled them up. It was, it was foreign policy why, and the war sorry. on terror. Why, why, why do you... Let me take it to Majid Nawaz. Majid, of course, you, 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 you tweeted, you tweeted uh, one of the Jesus and, and Mo cartoons. Most people would say it was relatively innocuous. It was a divine figure uh, saying hello to a prophet and a prophet saying hello Hi. back again, yeah. basically. One of the other cartoons was, was slightly... Uh, Slightly more, slightly uh, less uh, innocuous. Yeah, less yeah. innocuous. That's <laughs> yeah. the yeah. that's the word. Uh, that's the phrase I'm yeah. looking for. You you had death threats. Mm -hmm. um, answer Razan Nadim's point. Well, first of all, I just want to make it clear that not all Muslims define uh, offence in the same way. Not all Muslims take offence at the same things in the same way. Uh, this uh, Muslims are not homogenous, and I don't claim to speak on behalf of Muslims, but I think likewise, nor should anybody else. So. When somebody comes on this show and says, well, Muslims find that offensive, I think what they really mean is, I find that offensive because I'm very insecure in my own belief about God. Um, the, second, the, the second point I'd like to make is that there is no right, that, that, yes, there is a right to be offended, there certainly is no right to tell others or insist that others do not offend you. They are two very different things. Everyone is free to take offense at anything. I mean, people could take offense at my dress sense. But what they cannot do is insist that I dress in a way that doesn't offend them. They are two very different things, and that's important when discussing cartoons. The second thing to distinguish is that every idea is open to scrutiny. No idea, whether it's a philosophy or a religion, is immune or can be or should be immune from scrutiny. That's different from hate speech. But would there not have been a very different attitude? Let me Would there not have been a very different attitude to, for example, as there was anti-Semitic cartoons? Well, What's that's, the difference? Yes. That's why I'm making. The, that's why I'm right. drawing this distinction because anti. First of all, Jews are a race, and anti-Semitism is stigmatizing of people. I've often said no idea is above scrutiny, and no people are beneath dignity. And if we were, if these were racist cartoons, then there's a legitimate conversation to be had about racism. The reason that I said I wasn't offended at the cartoon that you've just uh, highlighted, it was a stick figure of a character called Jesus saying hello to a stick figure of a character called Mo. And the character called, called Mo said, how are you doing? The reason I picked that, that particular cartoon to say I wasn't offended at that is because it left no other option for people that take the view that this gentleman's taken except to say that's blasphemy. And what I suspect is that the issue at hand is there's a separate debate about uh, racial hate speech. The issue at hand is that many vocal, active, kind of communal, so uh, self-identifying, uh, politicized Muslims will take an issue with blasphemy per se, and what they don't want is any depiction of the Prophet in any way. Dan Hodges, in a minute, oh, but I must come back that's to That's problematic, and that's problematic. You've qualified freedom of speech. Was that Jesus in Mo Kartian that he tweeted? Was that blasphemy? I don't think it was blasphemy. But the thing is, it's, again, like you said, people may have different views, but the point is, he's qualified freedom of speech, saying, it's all good, apart from racism. That's bad. Well, hang on, then you don't believe in absolute freedom of speech, do you? You're saying that it's all relative at the end of the well, day. You know, right? They, 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 they yeah. ban Reverend someone. Rose they actually fire Austin someone in charge of the hate crime. It's ridiculous. Let's bring in Rose now, we live in chaplain a... to the Speaker of the House of Commons. We live in a civilised society, and I think it is important that we safeguard freedom of speech. Of course, freedom of speech from time to time is going to mean that somebody may f say something that I'm going to find offensive, but it does not mean that I go out and shoot them. It does not mean that. Yeah. And, so, and, and, and I also think that we do need to be responsible in, what, in some of the things that we say. However, as I say to my children when they were growing up, you cannot legislate for someone else's behavior or what they say. You can only decide how you are going to respond in that situation. Which is more important, the humor getting the laughs or thinking about the people who are deeply offended by this? Well, I think those who are doing humor, they're only thinking, I'm going to get a laugh out of this. Yeah, that's why they fired as and, a journalist. You know, that, that's their How does that particular work? thing. No, can I come in and say, I, I'm, yeah. as a rabbi, I don't like anti-Semitic cartoons, but I defend the right of people to make mm. anti-Jewish or anti-women or other mm. anti-remarks. Because not only is it part of freedom of speech, but it also means that nothing is protected from scrutiny. And, and, and everything is open to criticism, whether it's rogue rabbis or paedophile priests Holocaust or, or whatever. 
Pardon? Holocaust well, that, denial. That's a historical difference. I think the real dividing line is you have a right to, um, uh, to criticise, but you don't have a, 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 a right to incite to violence. And when it goes from uh, inspiring laughter to inspiring actual physical actions, that's the dividing lines. line. Dan, Dan Hodges. Hodges. Freedom of speech. All these different lines. Dan Hodges, if I may, um, we've not heard from Dan yet. Yeah, no, Rosa, and uh, I'm no doubt we'll hear from you again. Um, Dan Hodges, columnist of The Telegraph. Are we cowed? Well, to an extent, yes, we are being cowed, and, and I think this comes to the point, of the, uh, the point of the argument. It is ridiculous to say that we all have an absolute right to, to say what we like whenever we like it at any time. We don't. We have constraints on free speech, even outside of the religious sphere, which is why we have defamation laws, we have libel laws, things such as that. There are various factors which mitigate how we exercise our free speech. There's no doubt about that. The debate we are having here today is about should one of those factors be fear? Should one of those factors, it, it, it quite clearly is, should, should one of the factors that influences our free speech be the fear that if we, if we exercise our free speech, somebody's going to come in and murder us? Now, you made a point, and, and I, I, I think there is some legitimacy in the point. If you look at the, the, the Charlie Hebdo yeah, cartoons in, 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 in the whole, there are a number of their cartoons that I personally would be uncomfortable, uh, uncomfortable with. And I've seen the allegations that some of them bordered on racism. Fine. Let's put that to one side, though, for the moment. Let us focus just specifically on a cartoon which focused on a negative, or what was perceived to be a negative image, of the Prophet Muhammad. Do you think it is legitimate for a magazine like Charlie Hebdo or any other magazine to produce an image of that kind? Is it legitimate for them to do so? If you're asking me to believe in freedom of speech more than other people are, then no, because they were prepared to ban someone when they wrote something well, anti-Semitic. Yes, no, 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 I'm ask saying don't ask me you. to believe in... No, you no, you're saying the right to offend. No. You should believe in that no, more than everyone no, no, else. No, no, because Charlie no, Hebdo smacks of hypocrisy in their no, own actions. I, 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 and I'm removing the hypocrisy. I was being very specific. You have rightly said that, they, that, 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 that there was censorship of people for racism. I accept that people should not be and allowed to express towards Arabs as well Exactly, exactly. Fine. And, and I'm, I'm accepting that. But I'm saying on this specific point, on a cartoon that was not generically racist, a cartoon that just showed a specific image of the Prophet Muhammad, do they have a right to publish that? Anyone has a right to publish anything if, though, you're going to treat everyone equally. Muslims aren't being treated equally when he sh Charlie Hebdo. It's very clear. I, I, you can't separate the case for me, Dan. It's very clear. Imagine us. Yeah, so, 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 that can't, so you're saying anyone has the right to say, if they did publish a cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad that didn't have any well, racial... Well, about show black people in a bad light, show Jewish people no, in no, a bad no, light, but you aren't, though, okay. right? No. Because freedom of speech has limits. Can I ask a question I was going to ask? If they did depict an image of the Prophet Muhammad that didn't have any racial stereotyping whatsoever, uh, and so therefore it takes away that point, are you then supportive of, the, of, of that? Would you say, yes, that's fine, that's a, that's a good and legitimate question to ask. The founder of a religion that's influenced billions of people across the world, it's legitimate to scrutinise any religion, including the Prophet Muhammad and Islam. It's legitimate. Charlie Abdul was not in the business of trying to get dialogue going. Yeah. He was looking to offend. Okay, yeah. Don't miss in a second. Don't miss in a second. Let's hear the audience. Lady back there with a the blue top. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Quick points, please. The point is, I'm just wondering, I, I get this idea, we have a, a Muslim and we have race. Muslim is a, is a faith system, and therefore it's not a race. So we cannot use the word racism when we're talking about a religion, because it is a choice. Yeah. Your race is not a choice. And anything that you can convert to is not, is, is not a race. So therefore we're, we're looking at two different issues and we're conflating two different ideas together so to try and make yeah. a point yeah. Yeah. that doesn't make yeah. sense. Yeah. I think the issue involved here is hypocrisy. Why? We, we tend to give the impression that everything we do, we can do it freely. If you are cooking, for example, there is a limited amount of salt you have to eat. You are driving on the road, there is a speed limit. Anything you have to do, there must be a limit. So freedom of speech cannot be without a limit. The issue here is... Would you find, you, would you find sir, these, these cartoons, a cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad, offensive? I find them offensive, but I will not react the same way these people reacted. No, no, of course, however, of course. However, let, me however, ask you, let me ask you another uh, question. Because uh, the Guardian cartoonist, Martin, Mike, Martin Rousen. Rousen, he was saying on Channel 4 News that he did want to do a cartoon of uh, the Prophet Muhammad with a T-shirt on 
Prophet Muhammad t-shirt saying, not in my name. But he didn't feel he was able to do that. Would, if he had done that, would you have found that offensive? I have said it, and I'm repeating it here as a Muslim, that you can offend. You have the choice to retaliate or to forgive. Well, would you that is that, what Islam Would you have preaches. found that offensive? Okay. I, even if I find it offensive, I'm not going to react by killing this I know this that. Person. Right. I know that. that is the point. I understand. However, but, but, let, let me bring it back if I can. Let me bring it up. Of course you wouldn't. But, but let me bring it back. There's, people are worried about blasphemy here, uh, sort of stealth, sure. through the back door, yeah. or through the front door, whatever. Very much, very much through the front door. Can I just quickly, uh, there are some people speaking about who, who have clearly sort of mugged up on Charlie Hebdo in the last couple of days and drawn from this tragedy whatever they like, but you really should know more if you're going to speak about this. And I have shown and you're more going about to know, than you about you, this You topic. are going to need to know more yeah, before, you, before, you, more you, smear, more you, before you smear I'm death, not sparing, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not but let me just, all dead one thing, one thing you may not be aware of, one thing you may not be aware of, but it's worth throwing into the discussion, is that there are laws on the continent, particularly to do with anti-Semitism and particularly to do with the Holocaust. And let me just explain, because you may again not know this, but the historical reasons for that. France has historical reasons to be incredibly sensitive of anti-Semitism in particular, because within people's living memory, tens of thousands of Jews were put so on we shouldn't the trains be sensitive and slaughtered. No, let me explain. Well, we shouldn't be sensitive is, of it. Let me there's a secret website let called me, Google. Let me, let, let, me, let me finish the point I'm making. There let are very specific let reasons. Let him explain. There are very specific explain. reasons. There are very specific reasons in France and Germany why some of those laws exist. But let me get back to the main point where you've been trying to divert us from. That's this. What is going on with this is an attempt not to make Islam be treated different, and not, not to be making uh, Charlie Hebdo. It wasn't to treat Islam differently or Muhammad. It was to treat Islam exactly the same way that secular free people have the right to talk about every religion. Oh. And, and this program and others are trying through the front door, some people through the front door with Kalashnikovs and others through the back door with this kind of weasel oh, talk. Yes, yes, what they do is try to make one religion free from being able to be criticised and it well, must be stopped. Well, people that are so insensitive are with you about their own religion. Tyro, from Discuss Jesus, yeah. you would be uh, so. unhappy about uh, derogatory cartoons about Jesus Christ, wouldn't you? Told me earlier on. Um, I, I mean, I do subscribe to the fact that everyone's got a view. Everyone's got a you know, right mm. to their own opinion. Um, but I kind of question the wisdom in all of this. Um, and the purpose in all of this. And what's interesting about the magazine is... Well, the purpose of being so provocative. Yeah, the purpose, yeah. What, what's the purpose? I mean, um, surely the aim should be that, you know, it can help the society to be progressive. Harmonious. Uh, yeah. Harmonious as well. Um, and I think, if anything, mockery in all forms is non-progressive. It's poison. And I think what we have here is almost a self-combustion. Um, of the very fanaticism or the fundamentalism. It's a, it's a joke, it's a laugh, it's freedom talking. of speech, it's a bit, a, bit of, a, a bit of mockery. If you take out mockery, mm. you take away comedy. It's also a weapon yeah, for truth. Yeah, I mean, truth, this is, you know what I mean? Weapon not, for truth? It's a weapon for truth, and that's sometimes why people don't like being lampooned, because it's actually too close to comfort, and it exposes mm. ills that need to actually come out and... Kate's worth it. Sorry, sorry, Ray. Kate's been trying to come in. I think, I think there's quite an important point that, that seems to be sort of hinted at and not quite explicitly made, which is there's actually quite a big difference between lampooning Muhammad and the stories and ideas and ideals behind Islam as, as, a, as a, a sort of structure of thought and of belief. Mm. And there's a difference between that and lampooning individual, ordinary people who are Muslim. That's quite mm. different. In that factual fact, there are 32 mm. countries around the world where it is illegal to stop being a Muslim. So to assume that anybody who fits that label Muslim believes every word that is you know, spoken by radical Islamists is, of course, completely wrong. And in fact, the first victims of extreme radical Islam are ordinary Muslims. And for their benefit, as much as everybody else's, we must continue to, to shred apart the ideas behind it and challenge it for their benefit as well as everybody else. Uh, uh, no question, just throwing it to you. For me, the example I refer to, again, it's a, it's a website called Google. If you go on that, you can find some examples of how Charlie Hebdo in the past has been hypocritical. No, let me finish my point, Majid. Let me finish the point without being sarcastic about it. And um, in, <laughs> yeah, I'm allowed to be here. Uh, but it's, uh, in Charlie Hebdo, um, Nicolas Sarkozy, it was a case when um, 
he was, they were hinting that he was converting to Judaism for financial gain, and that was considered to be anti-Semitic. Now you're saying that we should be allowed to push the boundaries. There's some boundaries saying we can't be pushed, that, that shouldn't be pushed. That it's a choice to buy it. That's not the question. We're isn't not saying a choice to read it. the right to buy it's, something that offends it's, you. It doesn't offend. That's not the question that we're talking about. It's disingenuous. We've already had, we've already established the point that Muslims are not a race, and we've also already established the point, as Kate made so well, that uh, there's a big difference between b scrutinizing a religion and its founder and picking on individual Muslims. No one here wants to pick on people. What we're talking about is the importance of scrutinizing, scrutinizing ideas. Why is that so important? The reason it's so important is it happened to me last year. It happens to millions of Muslims across the world. Minorities within minority communities. There are feminist Muslims. There are gay Muslims. There are ex-Muslims. There are liberal Muslims. There are dissenting voices upon whom the charge of blasphemy is used not just to silence them, but to actually kill them. This, this week, blasphemy. ISIL, on the streets of Iraq, publicly executed a magician for sorcery. The poor chap was a street musician attempting to make a quick buck because there's nowhere to find a job because ISIL are doing such a terrible job at, at running that place. And they executed him for sorcery. Uh, people use this excuse of Islamophobia, in, and it is an excuse. It's not Islamophobic to scrutinize a religion, just as it's not Christianophobic to scrutinize Christianity. But they want to silence minority voices. <laughs>